All right. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, everybody. I am hoping you guys are coming into the room. I'm hoping your week has been great thus far. We are midway through. Uh, as you guys know, we have been doing midweek check-ins because Make Ready to Love, Make a Move has been so amazing that um, we have to check in midweek. We can't wait until Friday, uh, Friday's recap to have a conversation. We have to get into it uh, midweek. We have some special guests hanging out tonight's guest. Uh, we have, I, I see a lot of you guys are excited to see him. Let me bring my co-host in really quickly. Scorpio Mo, what's good? What up? <laughs> what's good? You know what? I got a surprise. You don't even know this. Um, for all of you guys, if you are in Atlanta or the Atlanta area, please put, hey, Tamika, hey, Janera, hey, Keisha in love. Eesh, Janera, what's up? Put a Put a one uh, XO in the chat if you are in the Atlanta area, because we have something very special coming for you next week. It is a um, a Christmas soiree, if you will. Crystal uh, XO is having a Christmas soiree here in Atlanta. So if you, yay, Tamika. So all of you that have an XO in the chat, uh, I'm going to expect to see you here um, because we are doing a special Christmas soiree uh, with some of the ladies from Ready to Love. We have next Thursday, uh, December 7th, I'm going to have Vernicia. I'm going to have Alexis from, um, from Houston and Liz and our girl Shay uh, from Atlanta. They're going to be hanging out with us. We're going to do an under the mistletoe soiree here in Atlanta. So if you are in the area, it's going to be in College Park. More information will be coming. Um, hopefully Mo will be able to come out and hang out with the ladies. Um, I think it's going to be a good time. So we're going to do it at ATL here in Atlanta. Um, the flyer will be out tomorrow. We'll post it on the YouTube channel. If you are in the city or around the city, I expect you to come out, show the ladies some love, take some pictures with all of us. Yes, Alexis Fly will be in the building next Thursday, uh, 8 to 10, ATL College Park, right near the, uh, the airport. So there's no excuse not to make it. So Scorpio Mo, you got to come out, entertain the ladies, and it's going to be a good time. Under the Mistletoe Christmas Soiree from Crystal XO with our favorite uh, Ready to Love ladies. And don't worry if you guys are not here, we're going to be broadcasting uh, live so that you can join in on YouTube. So I like uh, it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. A little Christmas, a little Christmas cheer, a little Christmas cheer for uh, all the fans to be able to come out, take pictures, meet the ladies, hear what they got going on. Um, so, yeah. And then we'll, Mo, Mo will be our um, our hostess. Uh, we'll have him come out and entertain some of the audience and, and the ladies. But it'll be good. It'll be good. Thank you, Marriott. She says she'll be watching from uh, Toronto. So, Mo, this week. This we went viral. We went viral. It man. went viral. The clip went viral. Yeah. The clip went viral. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the clip. Now, we, we know everybody knows we got a special guest joining us tonight. We're right. going to bring him on in a few minutes. Um, but before we do that, before we even get to the viral clip, we talked about it on Friday. Um, we talked about Ashley and Kirsten. Um, we talked about that, but I want to play this clip. Uh, I want to play this clip with the ladies. It's a digital clip from OWN, and it's ladies talking about how they date. Or should, you know what? Maybe I should wait until we bring our guest in. Maybe I should. Uh, not K Fields trying to. Uh, Look here, y'all. Don't be trying to holler at Mo and getting upset if he don't respond. We're not gonna do that. No, I be honest with y'all, just so y'all know, I can't see Chris has to tell me. Okay, we're not gonna do that. We are not gonna do that, ladies. Ladies, we're not gonna do that. Um, yeah, let's 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 look at the Ashley clip. And then I have another clip, but I'm gonna wait until we bring our guests on because I feel like there's such a difference in the way women date from the way men date. Would you right. agree with that? Absolutely. 
What do you think? What to you is the biggest difference between the way men and women date? Um, I just think men go in there with. No, I can't even say that. I just think the expectations are different on both sides. Okay. That's the biggest thing. It's just expectations. What are your expectations? Just to have a good time. That's it. It's kind of keep it simple, you know. And women's, I will say, I will speak. You can ladies let me know in the chat if you disagree. It depends on where a woman is in her life. If she, if she is excited about that guy and wants to be in a relationship, our expectations is this could be the beginning, <laughs> the last first date for the rest of my life. This is like the first date, huh? On, on the first date, you like that? I could be. I have been before. Yeah. Y'all must have talked a lot before the first date. I t talked a lot and I really liked the person. I had high hopes. I was in my head before I got there and I learned to not do that because you can't judge the book by its co cover. But I do think that a lot of times, you know, women are more excited about the guy and kind of have already imagined it working out with that person. Like how? Like putting your first name with their last name type <laughs> Maybe not before the first day, or maybe man in in college and high school, high school and college, yes. Okay. Um, but see, when you date in Atlanta, you know, it. it I went from being super. Ex I will tell you this. Um, I went from being super excited about dates, uh, -huh. uh to being so disappointed that I started to dread going on a date. And that's not what, what's the dread part. I would just think like this is gonna be a waste of time. I think I would tell you that, like this is gonna be a waste of time. Yeah, you used to go into it with that energy. I did because I had been hurt. So I think was <laughs> Gun Boss was my first day. But see, I think that by the time he is adding, he's always adding pressure. Yes, pretty amazing. My my hair is different. It it is different. Um, but I said that I changed my hair. I, I probably need to stop. Changing my hair so often, but because I feel like it's hard to get to know, really, it's hard for people to recognize you because you look very different with your hair changed. But anyway, let me go back to what I'm saying. I I went from when I was young, I had a really naive idea of love and I would get so excited. And then after you start dating in these Atlanta streets, you start getting resentful. And I, I used to actually not want to go on dates like. Oh, this is just, this is a waste of time. I don't want to do that. And I had to change. That's what I had to change in, in order to get a different result. So I had to be open. I had to, I had to change and be open. Um, but I, I have gone on first dates hoping that things would work out. Now, when I went on my first date with my husband now, I don't think, I wasn't thinking that. I was. I wasn't thinking it was going to be our, our my last first date. I really. It was a surprise. It was definitely a surprise because I just wasn't even in that mind space. I was like not excited about dating. I just was like, you know, oh, thank you, Keisha and Love. What about you, Mo? Have you ever gone on a date with a girl first date and thought I want this to be our my last first date? Uh, no. <laughs> So, Gun Boss, you put me on. You put the pressure on me. Let me ask you in the chat. Respond in the chat. Did you want? Did you think when we went on our first date that would be your first, your last first date? I don't think you did. I don't think you did. I mean, we'll see what he says. Hopefully, it won't be something that embarrasses me. So but that's I think he did. <laughs> first started dating to then. Do you think it was Atlanta or just life experiences? You're getting older and things change. No, I think for me, I I think it it could it. Life experiences, but I also think there is a reputation of Atlanta that is negative, like has a negative connotation to it. So, so Gun Boss, Adrian said he didn't think that would be his last first date either. I didn't think so. He didn't. He did not think that. He did not know. When I first was dating, even before I came here, I thought you had to be like the new edition records. I love the new edition. Right? I thought you had to be like, you had to be feel like Ralph did yeah. and approach it like that. But as I got older. But see, that's the thing. When we get out, you have to be. Oh, honey, bunny. No, you were enough. Oh, he said, I thought I was not enough for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Mo. So I, I wish that men stayed like the new edition records. Uh, I found out Bobby Brown was what you needed to be more like. <laughs> That's what I found out. We've talked about, we're going to bring our guests in, in a minute and talk a little about that. Let's watch this clip. This, this, this is the clip that went viral. And just to kind of jog everybody's memory, um, this clip with Ashley and Kirsten went viral. And I think Again, this is not necessarily about Ashley and about Kirsten. It's really more about the fact that men and women think differently. And I think these are great conversation pieces for us to 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 talk about. Right. And to talk about in mixed company. So let's look at this, 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 uh, this viral. Another direction. That's how you feel. I got to respect it. And that's all you have to say. If that's how I feel. I'm going to respect I mean, it. You, you seem like you said your one-liner. Like that. If that's all you have to say, should, let's hug like and let's just let it go. You ain't trying to fight for nothing. You seem like you've already made your it decision. It ain't about me already making a decision. You don't have a rebuttal for nothing like that I'm saying. You seem like you've already made your decision. I wanted you to say something. I'm and you're not saying you speak. It's not time to listen. It's time to talk. All of the things you say, you want to be there. You're here for me. You're all about the future and everything. You didn't even fight for a second. Oh my goodness. That and that's 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 how it goes. Now, let me say this, chat. Let me say this before that clip because that's a clip that went viral. But before that clip, Ashley had given him, she had basically gone in on him about the fact that she was not going to be this was not what she was looking for. She deserved more. She did not want to be in a situation that was a situation ship. She had given him all that information and then said, I'm going in another direction. So he said he took a sip of the air. Yeah, <laughs> and then he said, okay, I respect your decision. Now you got to take that, you got to take into context that she had basically given him all these reasons made it laid it out like she had thought about it and there was nothing more for her to stay with so mo yes have you been in that situation and do you understand why he responded the way he did yes been in that situation several times <laughs> and um i mean once you said it me trying to convince you at that point is begging like if you were on the fence then we can start to have or if we were in a relationship and I messed up and I know who you are and I like who you are and I, or I love who you are, then mm -hmm. I'll fight for that. But other than that, in the beginning stages, the getting to know when you feel like that, that's it. Okay. So Tiffany GT says, because he didn't want her, if he did, he would have definitely tried to say something to stay. Do you agree with that? Uh, what is it? Two weeks? <laughs> no. So that's what I'm saying. That's that. And therein lies the issue between men and women. Women feel like if there's any interest, you're a man is supposed to. We, we are really locked into the romance books where the guy is like, you know, the girl's like, I don't want I don't want it. He's like, no, come here. Like it's we were together. We're <laughs> trying to get the no. It was too soon to pull that trigger. It was too soon. It was too soon. Well, you know what? I, I want to bring our guest in because. This this gentleman was on the show. He you know, he was on the show. He wasn't with Ashley. He was I was to say, he was introduced to us uh with my girl Sharice. And you guys know I have a soft spot for Sharice, right? Yeah. So Gumboss is all women just want to talk. But that is a part of it. Women, we we do she wanted to she said he said it's you know at this point he said she said no it's time to talk and he's like no i don't have anything else to say let's bring in our guest my let's bring my in my welcome welcome my we hear you we can't hear you my let me i it thank you guys so much for having me i appreciate that this opportunity absolutely thank you so much for joining us uh on this hump day are you doing all right your, your week been all right so far oh um, my it's been fantastic definitely okay. it's fantastic okay. okay all right myself i see you with the guns out okay okay <laughs> myself came ready for the ladies tonight i see it <laughs> i see it <laughs> i gotta do that for my boy mo <laughs> because he's been on me <laughs> yeah, so myself myself yes. i just i just played the clip we want you to get in on this conversation. 
I just played the clip where Ashley and Carson, I'm sure you've seen it over and over again, like the rest of us. Have you ever been in that situation <laughs> where a woman is, is, is telling you she doesn't want the situation, she wants it to be over, and then you agree, and then she gets mad because you did not fight for the, for the situation? Yeah, I've definitely been in that situation. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're looking at it from a perspective of it's such a short period of time, you know, like a man will fight when he know like the prize that he has. There you and go. I, and I have to speak from the perspective of the show. We didn't get a chance to spend. Well, I can speak for Maya and I know to be able to fight, it takes to, so you have to be vested mm -hmm. in uh, some shape form, in some shape, form or fashion. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. but, 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 but also, you know, there is love at first sight and some people just connect and they do not want to disconnect. So, but, and then it's hard for men to show their emotion because we look so weak. You know, can you imagine if he would have tried to fight and what is, you know, and not to say that we got to worry about what our boy is going to be like, we're like, man, you, I mean, she cuts you. So, you know, I'm going to keep it moving. I don't think that he feels truly felt that way, but in that moment with cameras, with lights, camera in action, you know, um, uh, it's, the expected response from most heterosexual masculine males. That's a good point. Yeah, I agree with that. Let me let's let's start from the beginning, uh, Mazel, because that's one of the things I've said. I've had this conversation. We had this conversation last night on IG with some friends. I really don't, you know, I, it interests me what draws men to reality TV because I don't think that men are have that romantic idea that they're going to go on a TV show and fall in love. What made you want to be on uh, Ready to Love, Make a Move? Oh, God, great question. Um, for myself, um, you know what? I thought it was a great opportunity to debunk the misrepresentation that men have as being romantics. And also, you know, like the age of men being gentlemen and women being able to trust us. I thought it would be a great opportunity to be able to kind of show what that looks like from a more seasoned man's perspective who's actually lived and trust me had some experiences with women and in relationships so um so for me um you know and then you got to also understand we initially we thought that it was going to be from the perspective of all the other ready to love shows we didn't we didn't realize it was going to be from other That's out of town having a move here we thought we would be meeting women with with within our general area so gotcha. you know so so with all of that um it would have been nice to have met women um from new orleans or from the area that were more accessible but love conquers all and anybody will move mountains to have love so mm -hmm. you know i thought that it was a great opportunity okay well myself tell us a little bit about your love story what where what about your experiences we know you've been in the military we know that I love your dog, Ranger. I went to your page and I love the fact that we see him. I'm a dog person, so I like that. But tell us about a little bit about your background when it comes to relationships. Have you been married? What's your background? I have not been married. So, um, and I always get the question, you know, how are you 55 and you've never been married? And I just think that it takes men, first of all, forever to mature. And then secondly, like, if you grow, came from an era of love songs and a two-parent household, you know, we, you grow up with this grandiose expectation of things looking a certain way, but we've also seen people that love each other, hurt each other as well. Yeah. So in saying that, um, it took me for, I mean, I was a late bloomer. It took me forever to mature. I started my military career early, went to college, I played sports. So, um, and you know, and I know what it is to sometimes be in a two parent home and, and, you know, not here. I love you all the time. So, reaching and and wanting to feel certain things and sometimes the universe designed things for you to see things in a way and happen in a way so that when you are ready and it does happen it's going to only be one time you know so like i wouldn't change the design of anything of what's happened because i know like i'm the best version of myself that i could have ever been i think that as much as i, I would have loved women or could have been in love um it wouldn't have worked out just for the simple fact I needed time to mature. I needed time to love me. I needed all of the, all of that time to see what that looked like. So, um, and you know, luckily I've been blessed enough to to have a youthful disposition and also have all of this knowledge. So I got the best of both worlds now. Damn it, Marzell, you were saying all the right stuff. God damn it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs>
Well, Mo says that that's funny because uh, we were taught, we were, we, we always in this conversation where he says men don't, are not ready to get married early. It, it you know, they should not be married in their twenties. Actually, my husband who is 45, he said, I, you know, he's been married before, before we got together. And he was like, I probably should not have been married until this time. Like, you know. So right, no, no, no. I totally agree because um, but like I said, I mean, I would have loved to had the youth of somebody and the growth with somebody, you know, and I think that's what kind of puts us in this position that we are in now as we mature in life and we are single, we still want that youthful person, but you know, when we're trying to date within our age demographic, what happens is that you know, like everybody not loving themselves the same way. You know what I'm saying? And that can be emotionally, it could be physically, you know, it could have so many different kind of things to it. And um, so that's what makes it so hard for us to kind of find our mate that we're looking for now, because we still have this grandiose expectation of wanting that person that we always wanted to love, you know, and we want her to look a certain way, sound a certain way, act a certain way, um, to project herself a certain way, to be a lady. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sorry, Mo. <laughs> no, I'm writing all this down. I'm, I'm <laughs> I feel yeah. like that sounds to me like maybe because I would say you know for women, the the more you mature, and uh, then you become a little bit more specific about what you want, and it can almost get to where you are too picky because you're you don't you're not it's not into real you know you you haven't put it into real life and real execution. What is the like? What's the longest relationship you've been in, and how did that end without going to marriage? Um, man, oh my God, I've had I haven't had a bunch of long relationships. Um, I probably the longest has been four 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 years. I've had two like four year relationship. One I was very I was much younger and very immature, mm -hmm. and then the one after that. Um, you know, I think you know I was still growing and and still kind of and figuring out who I was. And then at the same time, um, you know, I know what it is to be smiling on the outside, but dying on the inside. And sometimes people think that your life is amazing, but, you know, but you still have to grow. So um, nothing really crazy happened. I mean, I'm not perfect. Trust me, I haven't. I mean, I've done some things that I'm not proud of. And, 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 and I think that we all have, but for the most part, I just think that I've been in a unique position to, um, to learn and to mature and just to grow. Do you prefer women in your age bracket? Um, put it like this. I'm a grown man. Grown men like grown women. Like, so I don't expect you to show up, you know, looking like you're 25. I'm a grown man, you know. So, like, you know, have having had kids or, you know, maybe, you know, fitness, maybe not your biggest thing. Like, I can respect all of that. But at the end of the day, um, I'm in a unique position where a lot of women don't believe I'm as old as I am until right. we talk. And that conversation goes a certain way in the music that I kind of still like. Um looks a kind of certain way. So, but my age bracket is usually, I have to be honest, um, it's from about 36 to about 43. That's kind of where I hover. I would, you know, and women mature so much faster than men. So, um, you know, some, some women have been grown since they was 12, you know, meaning like helping take care of siblings and having to be responsible in the house and kind of understanding what that looks like as well. So, but, you know, I do not have such a, I don't have a specific age range. I just need to be kind of, I need to be attracted to the person and I need that person to, to be loving herself um, for it to, 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 to have any gravity to it. Gotcha. Okay. okay. That is a pretty big gap though, Myzel. Uh For 50, 55 to 36, 36 and 55 is a big age gap. Um, so, so, and then let me say this, like I don't choose 36 year olds, maybe, you know, they look for a more mature man sometimes that, you know, still have a real youthful disposition. So it's not like that's what I'm out. I'm not hunting for anything. No, no. So, you know, you see what I'm saying? So I'm not looking for that, but I kind of hover in that range just for the simple fact that those are the women who are who are attracted to me. A lot of more mature women and seasoned women like they're kind of intimidated by a lot of different things and not in the sense of where that we're kind of competing, but at the same time thinking that I maybe want something different than what I truly want, you know, just because of my disposition or 
you know, so many other things, how my lifestyle, I just have a super active lifestyle. It's going to take a super, some, someone who loves life and the outdoors and to still kind of grow. Like, it, it seems like it's the physical though. That's that. No, no, not, not at all. Physical? Okay. Not at all. Because obvious. it's obvious that you keep yourself in shape. Right. I hear this one from a lot of men and Mo, you can jump in with this too. I hear this from a lot of guys that are, um, 45 and up. And actually it's because a lot of men don't necessarily keep themselves in shape either, but there are a lot of men that if the man does keep himself in shape or he just wants a woman that looks a certain kind of way, I've heard a lot of men say that women don't, they don't want a woman their age because they don't like the physicality of that. So the lifestyle is one thing, but it's the reality is usually it's the look because men are usually very visual, right? Yeah, but like I just turned 53, right? And just like he said, that's not the, the demographic that I look for, but a lot of times that's the demographic that comes at me. And then the women that are older than, I mean, are, you know, in my age bracket or maybe a little older, what I find is they feel intimidated by, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the word intimidated is the word, but they feel a way that you're still moving around and, and that you could possibly get a younger woman. It's not me, it's them. They feel insecure about whatever they're feeling, whether it be the inside or the out. That's not right. And then, right. And then, and then also you got some women who are, I don't want to say older, but more seasoned, they act in season. Like, <laughs> like they don't want to do nothing. Like they act in that way. Like just in the, the, the self-care and the self-love and not the physical self-care and the self-love. You know, like, so, like, you know, these, I mean, we're carrying around all of this tr relationship trauma. Yeah. All of this trauma that we think that we're dealing with and we're successful and, you know, we have ABCs and one, two, threes behind our names. But, man, but, like, people are not ready for, you know, like, like, why are you, you can't, I mean, do not stop living. Too many, too many more mature women have stopped living. And just traveling and doing things and, like, that's not just living. Living is every day giving more than you take in and sharing all of those experiences with somebody, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And giving back to all of the younger people. And and, and, I, and that's true. I think that like, I prefer older women. I prefer women in my age bracket, right? Well, what is your age? What is your age? Cause I, cause the ladies are asking. They, they, they. I just turned 53. Right. And so what's your bracket that you like to date in between 40 and maybe 55? But the problem is when it gets closer to my age, I feel like I'm late to the party. By the time I meet them, they're tired, they're angry. A lot of them are bitter. And I'm trying to like, it's this wall is built up and I have to deal with that. I'm, I feel like, like I said, I'm late to the party. The person they gave their all to, they don't have that energy no more. And, and it's just like, it's this hurdle I have to go through. And I don't date younger women, younger women, so I'm stuck in this crazy space. So. Mazel, he went, Mo went out with a woman, and I think she had a new hip. She had a hip replacement. No, <laughs> I did not go out with the You wanted me to go out with the woman. I told you, <laughs> I did not go out with that lady. She, okay, he, it, it was a lady that was an option, and, and she had a hip replacement. And so anyway, Mizell, tell us, what is your type? What is your, besides being active, besides liking to travel, besides having a youthful spirit, what is your physical type? What is Mizell just instinctively attracted to? I like a, I like a woman that knows how to be sexy. Um, I, I, I like women, so I'm not going to say that I like one particular, you know, nationality of a woman. I just like a woman who knows how to be sexy and know, and just has a certain style and class about her. Um, you know, I like women that are natural. Um, you know, we live in a time where, um, you know, it's okay to to do whatever you need to do to enhance yourself. But I come from an era where the only person that wore wigs was old ladies. <laughs> you know, like, I got to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have four brothers. My mom had, you know, my parents had five boys. My mom used to sit us and grease our scalp and do things like to take that little bit of extra care. Like, I, you know, so it's really hard um but but just to say i don't like i mean i, I like you know fit women I, I like you know slim women i like voluptuous curvy women i like women like i'm a heterosexual masculine male i don't have no feminine energy about me so i like a woman and that comes in different shapes sizes and 
you know, fashions. And when you sometimes see a man with a woman, you'd be like, how they hooked up? Because she a woman. You know what I'm saying? Because she's a, just because she's a woman. You know, so, you know, that's how they hooked up, you know. So, you know, you got to kind of get outside of the box of, you know, and, and women are amazing. All women are. So, you know, I mean, and it doesn't want to sound like more and I are just kind of like talking about because it's a lot of amazing, active, more mature women that have a zest for life. And That's we're true. still out drink you, out hang you and do all of those things. But at the end of the day, can we just kind of sit and enjoy and know how to be in each other's space and not be in each other's space and know what that looks like? Mm. I like that. Mazel said he ain't got no type. He likes women. I love it. Just women. It could be different. And I think I think men find beauty in a lot of different places. Um, you know, it depends on what 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 that woman's flavor is and what he's attracted to at that time. Um, so coming on the show, where were you at in dating at that point? You're in New Orleans. Were you dating? Had you taken a break? Where were, what was going on in your life when you started the show? I had taken a break from dating. I was dating someone and it didn't work out and not for any particular reason or anything crazy, but just, you know, some, you know, everyone is dealing with their own past relationship situations when it comes to trust or when it comes to other issues. And no matter how much you desire and think that, you know, and are trying to give them what they need, they can only do that for themselves. You know, so I had taken a break because it was someone I was kind of really deep into. Um, and um, this opportunity came and, it just it just kind of happened. And so I was kind of in a place that I was kind of taking a, 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 a break when this opportunity came, never with the notion of going on a show to find love, but to have an opportunity to represent love in a certain way. And you thought it was a situation where you guys like the regular uh, ready to love. It was a situation where you guys were going to be picking the women, correct? Well, it was supposed to be, you know, the old show, 10 men, 10 women, everyone gets to mingle. They get to, you know, they get to decide if they want to go out. They get a chance to get together with the host and figure out who want to, who, who they figure want to stay, who want to go. Gotcha. Like all of this was kind of thrown at us at the last minute. Like we had no idea that it was this medley of this carousel of men with only these four women. Gotcha. Mm. So that sounds like that might have been a little bit disappointing because you only got four. And and then it's a different dynamic because in this situation, the women do all the picking. You guys don't really necessarily get to pick. But I feel like and I told I told Mo, I feel like even though the women get to pick just because a woman likes to gets to pick doesn't mean the man is going to pick her. So when you go on, um, go on these dates you have to like the woman in order for her to have the ability to, to pick you. So I will say this, Mazel, your date with Sharice, I, I'm rooting for all of the ladies. I've, I've seen their, their past uh, shows. We've interviewed them before. I was really, really, really rooting for you and Sharice because I liked the date. Sharice is probably, in my opinion, the most picky out of all the women. And it's been difficult. It's been hard for us to see her have a date that really connects with her. And you were dancing and twirling around. I mean, you guys were having a great day. So I was like, okay, this is good. Sharice has a good option because we didn't really see a great energy between her and Maurice, which was probably the closest right. thing to positive between the two of, uh, between her and someone else. So Mizell, did you enjoy it? Was the date as good for you as it looked for us? Yes. I mean, the date with Sharice was, was cool. Um, the great, and another thing, like not knowing the, like the, the, the venue and how to dress. So that's why we were kind of like, she was dressed one way. I was dressed another way. She said she had just came from another date. Um, but you know, I thought that she was, I mean, when I don't even see me meeting a woman as a date, I see us having an opportunity to, to just kind of just to kind of just get to know each other. I don't want the gravity of it has to fill a date. I have to act a certain way. I'm gonna be a gentleman, so that's to go without saying. But um, but the I mean, but it was great. Um, one of the, the producers was even like, man, like she don't like nobody and she like you. So it felt good to know that she felt safe. She yeah. felt comfortable because most women don't even feel safe around men. So she felt all of you know she felt all of those things. And um, and for me. You know, I was happy that I was able to make her feel that way. But in form of myself, you know, she was a very attractive lady. She was nice. So a lot of, of what I saw and what I hear, like, I never got that from her. She was always nice. Mm -hmm. 
when you, so that's what my next question was going to be like, what were your thoughts when you first saw her? Were you excited? Is she your physical type? Were you attracted to her when you guys first saw each other? And what was the chemistry, the conversation like? Um, I was, I mean, she was definitely att attractive, you know, easy on the eye, but the chemistry was cool because initially um, when we met and she walked in the door, you know, I'm from Louisiana, like when we greet, we hug. You know, so I shook her hand and I introduced it and I tried to hug. She was like, oh, you know, mm. and which I can understand. Which, I mean, because you don't know me from Adam, you know, so I didn't take any offense to it. I just been like, you know, you really haven't to me. I felt like you haven't really been around a gentleman who have no intent or intention other than to make you feel safe here. So if us not hugging makes you feel comfortable, then great. And as you see, we warmed up conversation was cool you know it was my first time you probably saw a lot of the nervousness it was cameras and people around i had and and that was our literally first time talking when she walked up and we met we didn't get a chance to kind of like chop it up before that um so it was kind of awkward but it was cool because as you saw we were able to kind of gauge each other in a way where we ignored everything that was going on around us and i felt that coming from her as well now that's how i came across on the camera so yeah did you um was she I like the fact that you said did did you, well did you know who you were meeting? You didn't do you know did you know you didn't know who you were meeting before you walked in? I had no idea, did never saw a picture, didn't know at all who I was meeting. Okay, okay. So the conversation was good. You're into like what when you guys come on these dates, because I'm I'm interested to know like do the men think that they can pursue the woman outside of the show? Are you told to just wait for her to contact you what is what is so right so um just like i said we kind of go in not knowing a, a, a whole lot but also we're adults and, and we're grown so um it was said that it would be okay for us to exchange numbers and to be able to talk um she and i we did do that after we finished because i never brought my phone on set with me um you know just i mean i don't bring my phone on dates when i go so you know i'm just not connected to technology i'm from an age bracket that I don't want to be connected like that. Um, so, um, you know, we exchanged numbers. And then once I left, I reached out to her that night, you know, told her that I had a great time. I'm looking forward to seeing each other. And I even like asked her, um, you know, if possible, if you have the time, you know, could we do something in New Orleans outside of this? Okay. Um, and, but we never had it, but we never had a chance to be able to do that because <laughs> of their, their schedule, I guess, um, you know, cause they were dating, all day, every day while they were in New Orleans. But that was something she was open to though. It was something that she was open to and something that I even expressed to her, but she also expressed to me how busy and how tired she was. So I kind of respected that space as well, you know, not to engage her in a way to try to like push too much because like I say, we just had that brief moment together. Gotcha. So did you got, so after you talked to her, I mean, after you went, you know, communicated with her, that you would like to take her out. She said she was busy. Did you, did you guys continue to communicate? Because she said that she hadn't heard from you. So had you, was that true? Would you got had you guys continue to text or? Well, no. So we we text that time and that was it. But the very next day um, was the was the birthday party. So we actually were, had an opportunity to see each other. You know, the producers, you know, reached out and said they was having a birthday party. Um, and um, you know, so I was able to kind of you know, look forward to seeing her at the birthday party. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you get to the birthday party. Now, Mizell, we want you, somebody said, bring Ranger out. It, it, is Ranger available? People. No, no, he is not available right now. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but he is amazing. <laughs> Definitely go to my IG and check him out. He is a whole superstar. Yeah. He's okay. got he's great. A, a professional stuff. Frisbee catcher too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So you get to the, you get to the birthday party. <clears throat> and we talked about this, like, you know, everybody has been in a situation where you meet somebody that you're dating or you get introduced to somebody and then you see some other people um, and you th that you may also be attracted to. What is going on in your head when you see the other ladies? <clears throat> um, initially, before we ever, you know, went to meet the, the uh, ladies, all of the gentlemen who were there for the party, it's four ladies, it's like seven guys that showed up. You know, mm -hmm. so we having a chance to kind of mingle and we, I had never met anybody or seen any of the other guys. And then, you know, so you finding out like who went out with who and, and you know, just kind of like engaging each other in that sense. Um, 
you know, I was excited. It was a birthday party. I'm a gentleman. Like I had um, gotten some, I have a, a friend that family has a candy shop. I bought something for the birthday girl and I bought something for all the other ladies to share, um, you know, a nice sweet treat, like some, some New Orleans pralines and chocolate covered candy apples and stuff like that. So, um, so like, so once I went on set and saw all of the other ladies, it was just kind of nice. I went through, I introduced everybody. I saved Sharice for last. She even whispered, whispered kind of in my ear. She was like, oh, so you waited for me? Like, so you waited to get, like to engage me last? I'm like, I saved the best for last, you know? And and she gave me a hug and it was just kind of like a, a nice little kind of joke between us then. Okay, did you give her something extra special? Because I would be like, if you're giving out the gifts, do I get an extra special gift or? Well, just like I said, I bought something for the birthday girl since they were celebrating her and I wanted to respect that. But I also brought something for all of the ladies. Yeah. So I didn't just bring something just for her. No, I brought something for everyone. I was just, you know, I was being a gentleman, like how I was raised to be, you know, and never to go somewhere empty handed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Moe, what you what 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 you what you thinking over there? I'm thinking, okay, I, I got that. <laughs> now I'm gonna get to the to the uh, what was it? We was at the forehead kiss. Oh, so you want me to talk about that? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so so it's so funny because during the mixer, first of all, that was in the hottest part of the of the, 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 the uh, summer in New Orleans. It was 100 degrees even at night. Yeah, but um, that literally just I don't know how that happened just because, you know, and Mo and you could probably attest to this. Men are not going to be in a situation where they're competing, not strong, masculine, heterosexual men. They're going to let they, they, they're going to let everybody mingle and do their thing. And, the, and if a woman wants you, she's going to gravitate to you. You know what I'm saying? Or she's going to let you know it's time for you to gravitate back to her. Um, so the whole forehead kiss thing kind of came down uh, because we hadn't really talked too much that night, but then we had had a chance to kind of sit and engage and really kind of have some really intimate conversation. Okay. And then in the midst of that, she just kind of laid her head on my shoulder. It was something that just happened. And then um, and Ashley was kind of being funny. She was like, oh, can I see that again? So right. that's kind of how the whole forehead kiss thing uh, kind of went. It was you know, it was nothing like we were just, you know, it's just something that just kind of happened in the moment. But you could tell she felt safe and comfortable with you, correct? Most definitely. Most oh. definitely. Because as you see, you know, it was funny because the other gentleman, uh, Danzy, you know, he yeah. was he was doing a lot and she was giving me eye contact. But, but, but you know, like I knew that we were in a safe setting. If 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 I was somewhere in another setting and even sometimes when I don't know a woman and if she needs to be rescued, I know how to do that in a gentleman way. You know what I'm saying? So, so, um, you know, so she kind of was giving me that eye, like, can you rescue me? So that's why when he got up, she had already gestured for me to come and sit down. So he couldn't sit back down there. I saw that. So what, what, <laughs> what when he's saying and doing what he's doing over there, I see you just sit there kind of ignoring it, sipping it, but something had to be going through your mind. So I was just like, he doing a lot to say that don't nobody know each other here. You know what I'm saying? So like, like, you know, like, I don't drink, you know, I may have one cocktail and I know how to conduct myself. Like, like I said, I, I, I didn't even bring my phone on set. So it's certain things that I'm not going to do. So I would expect a mature man that's especially in that type of setting to, to you know, to handle itself a little bit better. Got you. OK. OK, so so myself, I just want to know where you attracted to the other ladies. Just just honestly, I got to be honest. I mean, I thought all of the ladies were attractive, but. I, I mean, just like I said, I felt that I was brought there for Sharice. Okay. You know, so so I didn't give that type of energy as if I wanted to engage a woman in other in any way other than being a gentleman and being nice and being in a mixer type setting. My zoo. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more, man. A little bit. You ain't see her and was like. Oh, because your eyes were definitely taking in the scenery. Well, I mean, but I mean, put it like this: if an attractive woman walks across the street, my eye—I I mean, that okay. I, I, a heterosexual male is going to look. So, just because you know you have a lot of the great attributes, doesn't mean that I'm lusting over you. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, so like I don't want that to be missed. You know, like if I see an attractive woman on the elevator and speak, it don't mean just because I'm speaking that that I'm 
trying to holler. You know, it's just like I'm acknowledging you. I'm letting you know that I'm here, you here. You know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. So for me, I never saw any one of the ladies that were, I just was like, man, I wish I had an opportunity to kind of see what that's all about. Really? <laughs> I really, really didn't. And I know that that sounds hard, but if you knew me, Mo, then you would know. Like, I, I am so oblivious sometimes. I'm I'm gonna take your word for it, but I'm just thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's just, I guess, the 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 snippet that that we saw the edit where you said where you asked Vernisha, has she found her man yet? It felt flirtatious. So you literally, Vernisha and I talked for about forty seconds. Okay. So like that snippet was just me. Like I'm at a mixer from a dating show and hearing like all of the different guys about like these women are trying to find their guys so it was a general question and a very like innocent conversation like i lived in houston for 16 years so we in this, we started up talking about that because i was already kind of standing there i was getting ready to get some water she walked up i'm like hey i heard she was from houston she was like yeah she told me what she did she told me she had some kids and then i asked her like so did so have you found your guy and then we laughed about it that was it. I offered to fix her a drink. I was there to get water. What man would not offer um 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 uh Sealy from the color she purple? She, she, huh? she was fine. She already had a date. She had somebody. Exactly doing right. Well, but he was kind of mingling and mixing around too, as everyone else was. You okay. know, so no, so people weren't just like like in their with their specific person. Like everybody was mingling. It was a birthday party. It 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 really didn't have the sense of men competing for women or and it didn't have the sense of women having to be obligated for any particular man as well mm -hmm. um you know like i saw sharice get get one of the guys number who was there for somebody else uh -oh. which which didn't mean anything to me because just like i said we're in a a very casual setting and i had only met her once so why would i have the expectation that she can't mingle and talk to whomever she wanted to she could have been getting his number, so she he could have told her like where the closest ice cream stand. So I'm not gonna just automatically jump and think that she's trying to, you know, trying just, to kind of be disrespectful well, like that. It just looked like a player move, like he was checking her temperature, trying to see what she. No, it, no, it wasn't. No, I mean, got you just gotta remember. I mean, y'all, we literally talked for 40 seconds, yeah. and that was it. And 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 I and that's why I was like, because it's kind of funny that these women had to find it. I'm like, so you find your guy? Like, it's almost funny for a man that doesn't compete for women like so y'all like y'all getting a chance to go through all of these guys it's like being on the dating site if one guy say one thing you're just gonna swipe left now and yeah. then i'm gonna swipe back right so how can people even engage each other and give each other the opportunity to be vulnerable and to be human and not be perfect gotcha okay, okay. so let's so let's how did the situation come because we heard your explanation for this that Byrne had checked on you to make sure, how did the situation with the bag take us through that? So let me just take you to the sharp version because I don't want to like take up all the time. But um, so just like I said, it was at one of the hottest points and the guys would already be dressed coming to these different events. Like mm -hmm. the women would have makeup and, you know, you know, have all of this catered to them. The guys look, just show up here, you know, and that's what it is. So I, my, myself and Tabari, kind of got dressed at the hotel so we had some bags I had my phone my wallet my car keys I had everything that was in my bag and the clothes that I had taken off they, I, and they told us to leave it in the lobby mm -hmm. so all of this happened after the taping so and then and then we went upstairs so they was like leave y'all bag somebody's gonna watch it the taping was over we go downstairs mics off everything you know their production is breaking down the women are getting you know they're jumping in different bands going back to their hotel and um and 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 um and Bernicia she was like man so they lost y'all bag so she was like let me find somebody from production to be able to help y'all not just me myself and Tabari you mm -hmm. know because everybody was moving they actually told us well listen we're gonna put y'all in an Uber Tabari lived outside of New Orleans so he had you know he lived almost sixty miles outside and like we, like so we'll kind of get y'all a ride home and we'll let you know. If we find your bag, well, I got my house keys. I got my car key. And I, I, I had all of those things in the bag. She asked to help with that. She was getting ready to leave. So she was like, well, let me know if they find your bag. I was like, well, I don't have my phone. She said, well, give me your number. 
Mm-hmm. Me give her my number. I'll call you and let me know if they find you find your bag. That's how the whole number situation came. It was never her and I flirting. I'm worried about if you lose your purse at a function and uh, and um and and Roscoe help you snotty nose. You're gonna think that's endearing because if everybody else walked by you and Roscoe help, and I'm not saying that she's Roscoe. I don't want to give that impression, Mo. You know, because she's a very uh, attractive woman, but you would be very thoughtful of that person helping you. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's how the whole number thing was exchanged. In the bag, you couldn't find the bag. How did y'all guys exchange the numbers? But, but I gave. She said, "Well, give me your number." Okay. So I, because you got to remember, I don't have my phone. My phone got is it. in my bag. So got she it. asks me to give her my number. I give her the number. By the time I made it home, she had called my phone. Remember, I lived in Houston. I see eight three two. So I initially got home. The first thing I did when I when I got home, I called Sharice and let her know that they had found my bag. Okay. She didn't even remember me telling her that until at the mixer. It's a whole lot that we're gonna try to get into tonight. You know what I'm saying? But um, and then I text Vernicia to like, hey, they found my bag. She was like, cool. We text a few messages back and forth mm-hmm. and that pretty was it and then so i was like it would be nice for us to be able to talk again she was like we can she was like ask them for us to go on a date i'm like i didn't know even know that was a part so she asked me to ask them to ask can but we go said, out on a date you did say it would be nice for us to be able to talk again so that is you acknowledging that you do want to get to know her better I just, just like I said, I'm, I'm looking at it from this perspective, like having mixers and how people are engaged. Just, just you know. So I'm not. First of all, it was never even presented that we could do that. And then secondly, like I was interested in getting to know Sharice. Now, was it a little bit flirtatious? Maybe you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna dismiss that. But my intent yeah, yeah. and my I think, eyes. I think it would be good if you did. just, yes, that's flirtatious. Right, that's exactly. Okay. So, but then she put it out there, was like, well, ask them for us to go on a date. I am a heterosexual male. If I want to go out on a date with a woman, don't think I'm not going to be like, like, you all know what? I've gone out with Sharice, but I would love for us to have an opportunity to go out. I wouldn't have had any problem saying that, you know, if that was my true intent. And okay. and, I, and, I, I and, and would have said it with um, gravity. I want to say to the chat that Mizell does have receipts. He's not. He's not lying. That is the way it went. Um, he. That is the way it went as far as Vernicia saying, "Ask them, can we have a day?" He's not lying about that. I am here to say we. We. I've, there are receipts for that. Um, but so let let's let's talk about Sharice. You said you were actually interested in Sharice when she. We saw last on Friday. Sharice said. I haven't heard from you. And she seemed like she was disappointed. So had you not inter- interacted with Sharice anymore since the party? So the initial time that we went on a date, I um, reached out the mixer, which was a few days later or the following day. It was something like that. Um, I called her to let her know that I found my bag. And then the next day was the mixer. <laughs> so like we like I, they were here two weeks before I ever went on a date with Cherie. So we literally didn't have any time to message, especially if she was busy. So it was no way for us to to kind of go back and forth and have this banter of trying yeah. to really connect and get to know each other in such a short period of time. I guess um, from Sharice's standpoint, if you had time to ask Bernicia, then you had time to ask her to ask Bernicia what? Would you um, say that she didn't? He didn't necessarily well, not ask part you anything. Well, right, all he exactly. said was that he wanted them to be able to talk again. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. And then, um, if I can bring up the mixer, which you guys didn't get a chance to see, so they went from me getting there and seeming like I was put on the spot to me leaving. Sharice and I talked for an entire hour. Mm. Sharice asked me to stay after we had talked about everything that was that had happened with the text messaging mm-hmm. about like because she expressed like you know so you were my guy I'm like how am I supposed to know that you were you were like I was your guy when we never even kind of even done anything for it. and she mm-hmm. agreed that she didn't let me know that and didn't let me feel that she asked me to stay all the way to the point where that like like they, she went to the back two or three times and she was like, and they, you know, she was like, I want to continue this journey with you. Oh, period. Wow. So what? that happened that you guys never, and I felt like it was perfect. I let her know that. And then let me kind of get a little bit more into some more juice. So 
then kind of everybody was in the room. Bernicia came in. Mm -hmm. So it was no seats. So I was like, um, I, I got up to let Bernicia sit down. I asked Sharice, I said, do you mind if I sit with you? She said, sit with me. I said, like, like, maybe I could sit on a seat and then you could sit on my lap or on the arm or you could sit on the seat. So she was like, sure, I'll let Bernicia sit, sit down. And I even went into, it was like, um, I was like, shows you how much of a, a gentleman I was like, Bernicia, can I bring up a situation that was very innocent between us that happened that has been kind of misconstrued? When I begin to talk, Bernicia got up and walked out. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So like, it's a whole, it's a whole yeah. hour of things that you guys did never got a chance to see. Bernicia came back in mm -hmm. and just went on a went on a rant. Like you know, like I'm here to date whoever I want to. I'm gonna do what I want to, but you're not gonna try to downplay me and do all of these things. So I'm not gonna go back. I'm a gentleman. I'm not gonna go back and forth with a uh, woman. Yeah. So she even. And while all this is going on, Sharice is sitting on the arm of the chair, playing in my hair, messing with my beard. So, okay. you know, kind of like rubbing salt into the wounds. So Vernicia proceeded to be like, well, he texted me on his way here. So I did text her on my way to okay. the actual mixer. What happened was I'm in a van, my earring fell out. I said, question, um, do you have an earring back? She said, yes. That was the text message. I never said like, I'm gonna be excited to see you. I'm gonna be at the mixer. I'm looking for, I didn't say any. Someone else brought the earring back to me and that was it. I tried to bring up what happened between Bernicia and I, and she walked out and just like I said, came back on a whole tyrant. Then when she was like, well, he texted me coming here. I had already told Ber Ber I mean, she had already knew that I had texted her coming there and had asked me to stay, Sharice. Right. Sharice, they called Sharice in the back two or three times. Like she was very, very distraught about all of this. Like, you know, to the almost to the point where, like, I don't want to see women be re-traumatized. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, like, it it was very so when you see her ask me to leave and 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 then I say wow. Yeah. It's, it's I'm like wow. Like we just went through this whole soliloquy and talked about this, and and. And just look at you now, like she was, I mean, I was upset that she was upset because as you see, they didn't even do an exit of me saying anything once I went out the door. So, yeah. so you know that it had to be more than what you guys saw. So you only saw a very small snippet of what happened because all of that was discussed between Sharice and I, and she wanted to continue her journey with my with no reservations. And you wanted to... So, and I and I wanted to, to to continue to get to know her as well. So I was I was very very disappointed. It sounded like you asked the wrong woman for the earring back. <laughs> well, once again, I had texted Sharice a few times outside of our initial text, and she never had texted me back. Got so you. why would I? So why would I even think that I could text Sharice? I'm on my way there now. I know Vernicia was gonna hit me right back. Uh oh. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. So like. It, so and not to say that it was anything wrong with that because I I, yeah. I mean I do not want to come across as like Venetia is a very attractive woman you know what I'm saying like like I like curvy voluptuous women but in that setting I'm gonna conduct myself a certain way and mm -hmm. how they made it look like was just outside of what the boundaries were and I just you know didn't kind of take a like it but this is a fictional television show. Where yeah. they have all of this footage and all of this audio and they create the show that they want you guys to see so let it be entertaining in that way because i can't even hold the ladies to things that they're saying because i see how much they're editing us as well right mm -hmm. now let me ask you this if you met all the ladies regular situation at um a wonderful place in New Orleans, you know, a nice restaurant, nice seafood restaurant in New Orleans. You run in, all four ladies are at the bar. Who do you think you would initially approach first? I think I would, I, <laughs> I would gravitate um, to the more mature woman. Sharice is a very attractive, you know, and she doesn't look 45. So, you know, I would have probably gravitated to her, but I'm not saying that Bernicia wouldn't have caught my eye. Mm -hmm. Ashley was also attract attractive. Mm -hmm. um, Zadi was also attractive, but I know what would have caught my eye maybe in the moment. Okay. I, I want to play this clip. I didn't play this clip early. I want to play this clip and I want you guys, uh, the men, uh, Mo and Mizell, to let me know what you guys think of this clip. All right? Y'all to like really know 
if you want to move like forward with somebody. After three. It just depends on the person. I've done this timeline for so long and it's not working. Yeah. So right now I'm just gonna go with the flow. So my dating now. style is pretty fast. Like yeah. most guys if wanna I like you, me I like right you, away. I'm just gonna be into you. I don't really feel like I need to know anybody. If we're meeting, we're the same, everything, and I have this connection, I just wanna be with you. Why I gotta choose anybody else? But every man isn't like that. I'm a hope it's romantic and I will fall dangerously in love super fast. But Lord knows I'm gonna do things differently this time. I'm going to slow it down. I'm not going to be like, Don's the one, because he might not be. <laughs> I have not been in a serious relationship since Alex. I keep people on a 90-day trial, and I have not been depressed. I have not been played. I have not been cheated on. Well, see, this situation in Nola is a little different. These guys are here with a purpose, and I'm going to take my time to see if the purpose is genuine or if it's fictitious. He didn't ask for my number, though. Which one? Don. Don. Bro, well, that's OK. That's a red flag for me. <laughs> Look, that's there. Whatever, Don. You know, moving is so permanent, you know, and it's a big deal. It is. So We're not permanent. We're not trees. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I can always We're not get trees. pulled off the deck and move like back you. if you need home. to. Look. But I'm not Very just true. moving myself, you know, it's my whole business. It's yeah. a lot to take into consideration. Yeah, so. no, for sure. I totally understand. Yeah. Would I move for my man? He would have to be a sure thing because I have a lot to lose. What if you like the same guy? What do you think? That's a possibility that that can happen. Well, Bernice, I mean, you went out on a date with Ramon and you did the date with Jabari. Jabari. So, okay, okay. Yeah. I don't feel like this is a competition. I'm not competing not for a man. Right. And if I'm interested in somebody, he interested in whoever, hey, you have my yeah. lessons. I'm not fighting yeah. or competing for a man. Yeah. The other thing that I really like is that, um, that we're in a all right, so what, <laughs> Mo, go ahead. What, what, what you think? What you think of that, that conversation? Not well, have a clip before they take that. It's fine if they if they cut it. I just wanted them to see number one how men talk, how women look at dating is just different than how men look at dating, mm -hmm. and and then secondly, we did see the conversation about you know if they like you know if 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 the women like the same guy, they're open to still going out with him. Mo, what did you think about that? The open to going out with the same guys? Well, or, yeah, even even the part about if I like a guy, I don't necessarily need to date a lot of other guys. Like, like. Yeah, but I mean, it still has to be both ways. You can like him all you want. What if he's not into you? Then what? But how will you know that? I mean, I guess a woman. I I feel like there's ways to know. I but, mean, G, and once you you know you see that. How soon? How soon? That's what they were talking about. How soon? First, second, or third date. They were like, by the third date, I know if I want to date somebody else. How soon do you think you know I don't want to date any other women? Ooh. Did I hit? Well, let me not say that. <laughs> he was getting ready to say, did I hit? Go ahead, Mo. <laughs> um, I say by the third. Okay. The <laughs> okay. What about you, Mazel? Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a definitely say by the, like, the second, I mean, by the third or fourth date, you know, uh, I, I'm at a point that I date with intent and intention now. So, like, you know, like, I'm not going to, like, I know what it is to spread myself. And I know why you can't be seen when you do that, because you have too much of you in different places, you know, like, but to put that energy in the ones, like, I know what it is not to do that and to be that intentional now is very uncomfortable for men, you know, so because usually... You know, you, you sometimes end up liking a person that don't like you and, and it's easy for them to move away from you. So, you know, it, it's 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 yeah. crazy. But but the whole thing like about the moving and for a man like to 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 want to even move a woman here, he has to know. You know what I'm saying? Like like he's not just going to go on a whim and be like, oh, she's attractive and, you know, and we're going to work it out as it goes. No, we want to know like we need certain things that are intangibles outside of you being attractive and being funny you know so what, like what we things, need to know what things do you need myself outside of uh outside of physical and being active and keeping yourself and you know youthful you know i need to i i truly need to know that like that you know how to love yourself the more you love you the easier it's going to be for you to love me 
like that you know that you can trust your instinct and your intuition you know like like you know like it ain't nothing that you got to see what somebody doing you know when somebody doing something that's not making you feel like you should be in a relationship so once you pass that stage of needing to know and loving yourself enough to move on when you don't feel like you're being loved that's the woman that i'm looking for because you know the gravity that i want her to feel for me Mm -hmm. We'll let her know that so they you know so that everything is comfortable, everything is good, everything is safe. I just want to, I just want some like, what would you, what, how do you interpret self love? Because I think everybody interprets that different. So, what does, what does that look like for you if you meet a woman? How do you know if she's, if she's loving herself correctly? Because she's vulnerable to letting me see herself, she's mm -hmm. vulnerable to letting me see her imperfections. She's vulnerable to know that every day is a day to start over, that you don't have to put up this facade and, and give me what you think that I want. Be you and let me, you know, and let us navigate because I don't know how to love you. You got to show me how to love you. I know how to love past women that I've been with. You know how to love past men. You can't bring that in to really being able to kind of feel that. So when someone is loving themselves for me, like they're going to be themselves and they're going to trust that you will allow that. You let your friends, like your best friend, all her nasty dirt, you still love her for who she is and the growth that she has and the growth that is going to come. That's what that's what loving yourself does. Allow someone that space. Oh, wow. See, that's I'm going to ask that because I feel like everybody interprets it differently. Yeah. Um. So you have you, do you have children? I do have girls. I, I, I have girls. So I'm a, I got to be a great representation of them. You know, mm -hmm. um, my girls are great. They're beautiful. And um, how, many, I know they watch. how many girls you have? I have two girls, you know, so like in 129, she's a nurse practitioner. The other one is in college right now. And, um, you know, and that's in, that's important. You know, that's important for them to see me know what love is and to know and to have a spiritual connection with something outside of myself. Are they by the same woman? Two different women, two different times in my life. OK, um, did you were you were you in relationships were those relationships that had the potential to be long term one was a long term one when i was in my 20s and um and the second one was something that happened kind of really fast and i knew what mistakes not to make again so mm -hmm. it had to be more about what the situation was opposed to she and i mm -hmm. do you do they want you to be in a relationship are they are they excited about the possibility of dad um finding love and being on this show I think that they do because like my oldest especially has seen women do a lot to get my attention and understand like that ain't gonna get his attention you know so i think that they want the best for me you know um and they know who i am as a person and as a man so you know they 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 really want you know they 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 definitely they just want me to be happy yeah okay well mazel we appreciate you hanging out with us midweek uh, you definitely have to come back after all this is over um, so we can talk without, you know, without limitations and boundaries. I know there's a lot that happens that we still don't know. Um, but both of us want to thank you. Mo, you got anything to say to myself before he leaves? Uh, brother, I appreciate it. I, I didn't know what this was going. I know it's going to be good. I didn't know how this is going to turn out. I'm going to keep it real with you. <laughs> but you had an answer for everything. I'm thinking you might got a publicist back there. Somebody. <laughs> Nah, but you did good. Nah, we we good, man. I like that. Man, thank you so much for the platform. And I also just want to talk about, um, so you know what I do. I'm a dean at a high school. I work with kids. I've been mentoring kids and just mentoring people my entire life. Um, um, I have a uh, uh, a a five O C a five O or one C nonprofit called Love Solutions that I talk with young adults about relationships not just romantic relationships but building relationships and rapport with their community with their families uh you know being able to have a platform where they're not being judged on where mm -hmm. that they can be you know like we have all of this teenage violence and all of these young women being murdered we you know murdered we never we you know we're in a time that we had never seen that before yeah that and they're and that's because of romantic relationships that they're in that they think that people care about it and self-love will let you know like someone that loves you not gonna even put you in those positions mm -hmm. you know so to understand that and to have someone and then they're looking at us and their parents not find love so and not to mention social media and the the matrix that we're in that you know that they see so they need mentoring they need guidance mm -hmm. um that's something that we provide and we, and we provide a safe platform 
for that. Um, nice. So, you know, it's, 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 it's something that I do, something that I'm passionate about. Um, you How know, long have I, you been at the high school? I've been in education probably for the last 15 years. I've been in high school for the past like six years. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, you know, trained and did fitness a long time ago. But, I, you know, I have different platforms that I just try to show people what self-love looks like. Um, having a dog has been an amazing transformation for me. I didn't need a dog. I know I talk about him a lot. I appreciate you bringing him up. But um, more men should understand what that looks like and to give up themselves, especially single men who don't need that that responsibility, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you know, every one day, I mean, every one day for me is seven days for him. So I want to make sure that his life is comfortable and um, and it's made me to kind of be a better human being. Okay. Nice. Can you give us a website for your nonprofit? Yeah, it's lovesolutions.org. Okay. I'll put that in the chat here, people. Yeah. And definitely check out my IG. It's at Fisher Mizell. Um, and, um, you know, feel free to ask me anything that you want to, any fitness questions and stuff like that. I, I'm into helping people become more healthier. Healthier, health, Being healthy is not just a physical look, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's mental, it's spiritual. You know, it's so, so deep that um, that it has to have gravity to it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Well, maybe one day you can come down. Like I said, we're going to have the ladies are going to be here next Thursday, but maybe um, one day you can come to Atlanta and do some type of workout session with the with the ladies here. That would be cool. Yeah, I have a brother that lives in Atlanta and who's married. And uh, so I actually travel to Atlanta not too often, but um, but no, I would love to be able to do that. OK, well, let us know. Let keep in touch. And like I said, we got to have you come back. Um, last question. I like this, Mimi. Mimi asks, do you see yourself married in the next two years? Myself? Um, I would hope that I could be because I don't think that it takes a long period of time to know. But it's hard out here. <laughs> you know, it's like they say, it's hard out here for a pimp. But this is hard out here for a man who has matured <laughs> to right, who has matured to a certain level that it's beyond the physical, it's beyond the sexual, it's so so much more in, in, intrinsic and want to see whomever they're around grow and and just kind of, you know, blossom. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, definitely, but it won't take two years with the right woman. Okay, well, we're we going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna be checking in with you, Mizell, to see Please how that goes. <laughs> well, we appreciate you so much, uh, Mizell, and we will definitely look forward to welcoming you back. Yep, and Army Strong Rangers lead the way. Gotcha. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you. Um, Pleasure. Bye. Uh, okay. All right. So, Mo. Yeah. Um, I got a text from Vernicia. She is going to join us on Friday. Oh. All right. So, I, I just wanted you guys to know uh, we had Mizell. That was a great conversation. Uh, but you guys tune in on Friday. Vernicia is going to join us. Uh, she wants yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Rosie in the middle said, "Let's debrief." Okay, so what? What did you guys think of what did What did you guys think of 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 um, Mizell? Where did my phone go? I know that man is slick. <laughs> you know that. I will say this, and I and, and I know you're 53, yeah. um, but you've been married before, right? Six months. I get married for six months, Christmas. Okay, you didn't have to put it out there. Okay, it seem like it was a long time. No, but I mean, you were married before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you were married before. So, do you think do you think it's right for women to think? Because I'm not gonna lie. To me, if I met a man, and I know everybody is different. I met, you know, but to me, if I met a man that had not been married at fit by 55, I would assume that there was, you know, something is. I, I, something is happening because you can't act. You can't say that it's always the other person. It's 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 you. I like the fact that he admitted that he it took a long time for him to mature. That was that was that was big of him. The Lord, the, I got from that. He was still in his player stage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, but I think that, you know, somebody asked, did you get an annulment? Yeah, yeah, it did actually. But um. You did? Oh, no, no, I'm lying because you have to get an annulment. And I got married in South Carolina and I had to go. Um, So we wound up just doing a divorce here. And I would have had to go to South Carolina to get the annulment. And I just did. Okay. All right. So, but you, 
I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know. It, I feel like he's probably really picky. I also um, did hear what he was saying. To me, it sounded like he, he is more, I mean, a, a man that keeps himself in shape is definitely going to want a woman that keeps himself in shape. And the age difference is, you know, that's a thing. Um, I did like the, I mean, do you believe that he really was into Sharice? No, you know, he liked that other woman. You know, <laughs> you know he did. Ah, oh, Sharon is silly. Um, uh, Rosie asked, would you say the same thing for women in their 50s who have never been married? I was in the, for, for, and, and I'm, let me say this. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong if you haven't been married. Not everything is not for everybody. But if you are if, if you are a person in your 50s and you're saying that you want to be married and you've never been, you pr there's probably something that you're doing to stop yourself. There's something that you're doing that's keeping it from happening. And how do I know? I was I was married, but I was single for a long time. And I learned that I was the one that was keeping myself from finding love. And as soon as I fixed those things in myself, um, you know, love opened up and, and, and showed. So I feel like I couldn't say, well, I've been single for 10 years after my divorce and there's nothing with, it's, it's not an issue with me. It's always the men. No, it's, it was, it was, it was a lot to do with Crystal. So I got married at 33 and divorced at 33. <laughs> <laughs> do you see yourself being married in two years? Uh, possibly. I'm open. I can't force these things, man. You know. Jesus Christ. What happened? So people are asking, ask, so you guys, please tune in on, please like this chat. I saw a gun boss telling you guys to like the chat. Um, like the chat and make sure that you are subscribed. Vernicia is going to be with us at 10 o'clock on Friday. I'm excited about that. Again, if you are in Atlanta, um, be looking out for the flyer and information where you can join us. It's completely free. All you have to do is bring a wrapped Christmas toy, Christmas gift for a child in need. Uh, we want to, we want to, we want to be able to give back to some children um, over the holiday season. So please, please, please um, make sure that you check that out. Uh, what's up, Saptosa? She says, after a certain age, marriage is pointless. I, I think that marriage is not for everybody. I do think, you know. I saw Jonathan Slocum, a friend of mine that is a comedian here. He's in his 60s and he just got engaged. And he and the woman are both in their 60s and they're both very happy. I think it's whatever you want at whatever time. Um, I definitely think in your 50s and 60s, it's for a different reason. So if you were to get married, Mo, if you, you were to get married, yeah, because I feel like if you get married younger, you may be wanting to have children. You may be wanting to have a family together. You may be trying like a family. How? I be like our like having kids, family, but family is how you treat one another. I don't no, but I meant I'm talking about people that want to have want to create a family together. That or or like okay, if I got married, if I had got married in my 30s when my kids were younger, I would have been looking for a stepfather for my children, right? That would have been important. Somebody that could step in. When I got married, my children were grown. So I didn't need somebody to be a stepfather to my children. You know what but I mean? I didn't talking about a need. That that's something else. I'm talking about a want. You want somebody, not you need somebody. Well yeah, but I'm just saying your your wants and needs are different at different ages. Okay. You don't think so? Yeah, yeah, I, I I do. That's all I'm saying. It just looks the needs are are different. You know, it's it's just different. I, I think that not only that, but they're different from men and women. So what would you what what would what would you be getting if you got married next year? Yeah. Why would you want to? What what would be the perks for you? What would you be looking for in marriage? Companionship. Okay. A, a friend, a lover for life, to grow old with, to create new memories for more. The 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 statistics from getting married from 20 to 40, the divorce rate is so much higher than it is from, let's say, 40 to 60 or 70. We grow, we make mistakes, we learn to appreciate people a lot more. So I just think it, it might be sweeter. I think everybody's time is just whatever their time is, you know? Um, it, You know, whatever your time is, whenever it's time for you is when it's time. I know somebody that's still married to their high, high school sweetheart, and he's 53. 
Yeah, that's what um, Edna said. Her, 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 uh, one of her children got married when they were in their twenties, and the both the 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 girl and the guy were in their twenties, and they're still married. It can work. It, I mean, he cheated on her a lot, but they got over. Well, <laughs> thank you for pointing that out. I'm just saying you're going to go through some things. But you're going to go through some things even if you get together in your 50s. Because I, I would say this. The difference is when you get, say, okay, Jonathan and his wife. And I, I want to have them come on. Okay. Well, his fiance. They're getting married in their 60s. They're going to be different issues that you're going to deal with. Huh? I love it. I like that. Yeah, but they're going to be, you're going to deal with different issues in your 60s than you did. And you're, that, that person may have some health issues. Like there's going to be different issues at different times in life. Right. So when you're younger, a person may have small children and you may be working on blending families when you're in your sixties, one of your, your, your spouse could end up having, you know, some medical issues or have to take care of an ailing parent. Like there's always, but it's always a bad side. We can share senior citizen discounts <laughs> at grand time cruises. So you're only looking at the negative part. I, 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 you know, and it's funny because I hear so many men that are older say they want younger women. And I just wonder, I just hope that, you know, they're taking care of themselves. Hey, Amen. Yeah. You got to be able to keep up with that woman. On yourself, man. Seriously. Huh? I said, I tell brothers all the time, man, get a physical check up on yourself. Take, take care. Cause you know, but I just feel like. Do you feel like you would, what is, you said your lowest was 40. Oh, yeah. and he's a little bit older than you. I just, uh, 36 and 55, that's a 20, that's damn near a 20 year, it's a 19 year age gap. And it happens, it works. There's a lot of people that are cool with that. I get them that, that age he talking about. I just, I'm cool on the thirties. I mean, we could be cool, but I don't want to 40 and a, I mean, 40 to 55 right now. But you'll be discriminated on the 55 with the hip uh, replacement. You keep, I did not go out with that lady. <laughs> I keep trying to tell you. We were, we were talking and I showed you a picture of her and I told you. Oh. Y'all says so she kept making those grunting noises. But people ask, before we get out of here, uh, yeah. about the date, about your last date, you want to give us an update? Uh, it didn't work out. <laughs> So we're back in, Mo is back in the dating. He's he's back, he's back in these streets. I was still in it. There was one day. It was, but you know, you I know these women on here are shooting their shots. Mo did not go, he did not go out with the lady, but I was, I did try to encourage him to go out just because I wanted to laugh. <laughs> see, that, see, this is what I deal with y'all. <laughs> she does. But I told him that I feel like she would have been a nice woman. I do. I do. And I don't feel like you should discriminate against her because she had a hip replacement. <laughs> I don't. Somebody asked me if would I date long distance? Possibly. Possibly. Depending on how long. Somebody said, when in Rome said, take that shirt off. Now, you know what? That is not what we're doing. That is not what Crystal XO is about. We are not having most strip on this show. Y'all are out of control. Hey, I told Crystal was last week a week because sometimes after this I go to I pop up here with a robe on. I don't want y'all to judge me. I'm just letting y'all know right now. I'm excited about Friday. No, nah, Friday's gonna be dope. Friday's, Friday's gonna, gonna be good. Vernicia is Vernicia is gonna be in the building. So y'all get y'all questions ready. Um, remember that if you are in Atlanta or around Atlanta, we're gonna be in. Uh, under the mistletoe, it's going to be a Christmas soiree with some of the ladies from Ready to Love, myself, Mo, and some other people will be there. Um, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a great time. A little holiday cheer. Spreading some holiday cheer. We will make sure that we broadcast that so all of you guys can be a part of it. But you got to make sure that you are subscribed and make sure that you like this uh, broadcast. And then um, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Is there anything else we need to tell people, Mo? Anything else? Oh, um, yeah. Thing coming up, we got Friday. Um, we need a question. We need on, a question on uh, what we're gonna ask. So start off on Friday. Oh man, I don't know. We gotta get a good one. We gotta get a good one. We'll uh, think put it in the thing tomorrow, right? Can we do that? You said what? We, can we put something in the thing tomorrow, early Friday, so it can? Yeah, ask yeah. Let's do. Let's do that. Um, um, let's do that. We're just, we're working on the, um, the, the, this is going to be so cute. I am so excited about this. 
that been. Oh, I also need to let people know. I told you guys about the handbags. Um, make sure that you go to the website. The website, I'm gonna give you guys the website again because you can get 20% off using my um using my code, which is crystal20. And the website is sossus.com. I'll put that here in the chat. So you can go there and check out the bags. And I'll tell you, they are dope. And um, S-O-S-U-S. Oh, my gosh. S-O-S-S-U-S. Hold on. Yes. So you guys can go there, put the, but you have to spell my name right. It's Crystal, C-H-R-I-S-T-A-L 20. You can get 20% off the bag. You can send that to your boo thing so he can make sure that he gets you a bag um, for Christmas. But it's for us, by us, Black-owned handbag company. That is really dope. Um, I need you to repost that on your page. Um, yeah. And then what, yeah, the bag is, the bags are super cute and you can get that Child, use that 20%, uh, Sharon, because um, they're reasonably priced. They're great quality, but you got to spell the name right in 20. And of course, get a copy of Dear Alpha Female. The book is still on sale. I decided to leave it on sale. You can go to Amazon. You're going to get a copy of the book for $10. You can also get the paperback for $20, which is great. And we'll have some books at the event as well. Um, Mo, when is the next date? When is the next date? I saw that. Um... I'm, I might cool out for the rest of the year, man. Just ride it on out. Um, we'll see how it goes. You, you well, we talk about that, but now nah, I think I might just chill out for the rest. Okay, let me ask you this last question, and then we're gonna get out of here. If you met a woman now, do you have time to be in matching pajamas for Christmas? Right now? Yes. Do I already know her? <laughs> no, if you no, met I do that. No, I'm going to tell you the cutoff on that for me. I'm going to keep it real with you. Okay. My birthday, November 5th. After November 5th, there's no Oh, month. so we already done. You yeah. been done. Already, that's already. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I thought about it, too. That's the cutoff. My yeah, birthday. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I, I was trying for match. I was trying. I looked on pajamas online and everything. I, was like, <laughs> I think we're going to do that. Trina said you don't want to buy Christmas gifts. I think Adrian and I are going to do a Christmas. Oh, I we, you don't want to buy Christmas gifts? No, I would. You would? I, okay. All right, y'all. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. It has been fun. I appreciate Mizell, uh again hanging out. Definitely. I think Mizell is an attractive, attractive man. Um, he's not going to have any problem getting a woman. It's just, It's just a matter of if he really wants that or not. Um, black girls getting their shift together said, what about matching cigars, Mo? I like that. I, I'm a cigar smoker, by the way. Matter of fact, I'm going to start doing it on here. I'm waiting to buy a humidifier, though, but yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Well, we will be back. It's not he'll be back after Valentine's Day. Mo, you're not going to stay out to, uh, you're going to start dating again before Valentine's Day, right? I, I might have a date before the end of the year. I'm just, we'll see what happens. Now, you know, we're doing a New Year's Eve party. No, that that's what I was going to say. We're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing a New Year's Eve party, so we may have to get you. You may have to bring us to that. Sneakers, right? Yeah, suits and sneakers. Suits and sneakers with Marlon Wayne. It's going to be a great time. All right, you guys, we love you, and we will see you on Friday here at ten o'clock with Vernicia. It's going to be hot. Show. It's going to be a great show. All right, y'all, stay good. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. See y'all Friday.